In today's video, I will show you the easy way to dual boot XOS with Windows 11. But this method makes it very easy to install XOS along the side of Windows 11 on the same drive and is one of the safest ways to set up a dual boot on any computer without risking data loss. However, it's strongly advised to back up your files to the cloud or external drive. Also, at the end of this video, I will show you how to safely remove XOS from the dual boot. Now be sure to watch the video until the end to avoid any confusion. Now check the description below for valuable information, timestamps, and download links. The only requirements of this video you need Windows 11 or Windows 10 installed on your PC or laptop and 8 gigs or higher USB drive to create a bootable disk with XOS. And lastly, you need at least 50 GB of free space reset from your existing drive. Now before installing XOS, it's recommended to create a system restore point on your Windows computer. Now go ahead and search for restore point in the start menu and open it. Now this tool allows to take a snapshot of the current system state. If something goes wrong with the XOS installation, you can use this backup to restore your system back to the normal state. If you are using Windows 11 Professional Edition, disable BitLocker encryption before proceeding. The BitLocker can interfere with Linux installations. For Windows 11 Home users, this feature is disabled by default. Now let's proceed with creating a free space for XOS. Now right click on the desktop and open terminal. Type diskmgmt to access the disk manager which displays all drives and their partitions. In my case, you can see that one drive is connected. Drive 0 has three partitions. The first one is the EFI partition where the Windows bootloader is present. The second one is the main windows and the last one is the recovery partition. I'm going to choose the C drive to shrink the free space for XOS. In your case, it might be D, E or F, whatever it is. Just choose any partition and right click on it. Then choose shrink volume and allocate a minimum of 40 GB or more for XOS. You can type the value in megabytes. In my case, I'm going to allocate 200 GB, then click on shrink. This will create an allocated free space. And that's it, we have done creating a free space for XOS. Next, head over to the official website of the XOS and click the download button from the top right corner. If you have a latest NVIDIA GPU, choose the NVIDIA edition. Otherwise, stick to the standard 64-bit ISO version. Once the download is complete, you will need 8 gigs or higher USB drive to create a bootable installer. Now connect it to your computer, then use HR to flash the ISO file onto the USB drive. Now once it's done, reboot your system and boot into BIOS using the keyboard shortcut based on your motherboard. Now mostly it could be F2, F9, F10 or the escape key. In the UFI BIOS, enable USB boot and change the boot order by setting the USB drive as primary. Then disable secure boot. Once it's done, save the changes. Now your system will boot into XOS from the USB drive. If it fails to boot, use the boot menu to load XOS installer. Once you're inside the XOS live environment, we need to manually create a partitions for XOS. Now first, make sure your computer is connected to the internet. 
To connect to Wi-Fi, close the installer window for now. Then click on the Wi-Fi icon in the top right corner of the screen. Right click on it. Turn on the Wi-Fi and click the refresh button to scan for available networks and connect to your Wi-Fi network. Then close this dialog window by pressing Super plus Q. It's time to create partitions for XOS using the free space we created earlier. Open terminal by pressing Super plus Enter. Then type this command to switch to Super user mode. Then type lsblk to list out all drafts connected to your computer. Now in this case, you can see the two main drafts. Now forget about the loops, just concentrate on the SDA or NVMe. The NVMe 0 and 1 is the main draft where Windows 11 has been installed and the SDA is the bootable USB. Now I'm going to type cfdisk dev NVMe 0 and 1. Now replace this part with your disk identifier and press enter. Now here you can see the EFI and Windows partitions. Now keep in mind that you need to use the arrow keys for selection and the enter key for confirmation. Now scroll to the free space for XOS. We need to create two main partitions, EFI and root. Now select the free space and press enter to create a first partition with a size of 1 gig and press the enter key to create it. Now select the new partition using the arrow keys and select type and choose EFI system. Then select the free space again and create a root partition of 20 GB or higher. In my case, I'm going to use the remaining free space and press the enter key to create it. The type is going to be a Linux file system. And that's it. Now we have done creating the partitions for XOS. Just remember these two disk identifiers, then write the changes to alter the disk. Once it's done, quit from the CF disk. Now, if you type lsblk, you can see all the newly created partitions the NVMe 0 and 1, P5 for EFI, and P6 for root. Now, we need to format these partitions one by one. The first format the XOS EFI partition, which in my case is NVMe 0 and 1, P5, by typing this command. Then format the root partition, which in my case is NVMe 0 and 1, P6, by typing this command. And that's it, we are done creating and formatting the partitions. Now close the terminal by pressing super plus Q, then press super and search for XOS installer and launch it. Now go ahead and click on start, select your keyboard layout, then choose your time zone and click next. Then choose your local. Create a standard user account and click on next. Next, choose the desktop environment. Since XOS is based on Arch, it offers four default desktops. Sleeks, which is based on the Hyperland Compassor, is a primary desktop environment for XOS. It is the most aesthetic and feature-rich option with smooth animations and a lot of features. Nakala is a tiling window manager. If you like tiling setup, this is the one to choose. And the Plasma desktop is fully functional desktop environment customized for XOS to look visually appealing. And Theome is the fourth desktop environment based on the i3 window manager. Now for this video, we are going to choose the Sleeks desktop, which offers an impressive Hyperland experience. Next, select your kernel. Set your hostname. And you can choose to install additional packages, 
such as NVIDIA GPU drivers if you have a compatible graphic card and other GUI applications. Then click on Next. Then select the drive where you want to install the operating system. Now I will choose NVMe 0N1, which is my drive, and then click on Switch to Manual Partitioning. Now look for the two partitions we created earlier. In my case, they are NVMe 0N1, P5, and P6. Now first select the EFI partition, which is NVMe 0N1, P5. In my case, set the file system to FAT32 and set the mount point as boot EFI. Next, select the root partition. In my case, NVMe 0N1, P6. Set the file system to XT4 and the mount point as forward slash. Now please be careful while selecting the partitions. Choosing the wrong ones may destroy your Windows installation. Now this is the summary of the installation. Click Next to start the installation. Now this process will take some time depending on the writing speed of your draft. Once it's finished, reboot your system and remove the bootable USB. Now you can see the grub menu. Now from here, you can boot into XOS for now, and Windows 11 is not showing. We are going to fix that issue in just a few minutes. If you don't see the Grub Boot Manager and your system boots directly into Windows 11, just restart your computer. While it's restarting, press the BIOS key to enter the BIOS settings. In the BIOS, look for the Boot Options and select the OS Boot Manager under the UV section, then make XOS as the default Boot Manager. Now once you have made the changes, reboot your system. Now you should see the Grub Boot menu. Now let's boot into XOS. Enter your username and password and press Enter. And voila, now you are inside the XOS desktop environment. It's time to add the Windows boot entry to the Grub Boot menu. Open Terminal by pressing Super plus Enter and type this command to update the package database. Then type this command to enter Super User Mode. Now type lsplk to list all drives and their partitions. In my case, NVMe 0N1 is the drive where both XOS and Windows are installed. Now look for the first partition, which should be the Windows EFI partition. In my case, it's NVMe 0N1 P1. Then run this command to create a directory for mounting Windows EFI partition and type this command to mount the Windows EFI partition. Now type lsplk to confirm that the partition has been mounted successfully. Then type this command to install the OS Prober. Now edit the grub configuration file by running this command and change the default grub timer to 30 seconds. Then scroll to the bottom and uncomment this line. If you don't set the OS prober value to false, then grub cannot look for the Windows bootloader and won't add it to the grub menu. 
Once it's done, save the changes by pressing Ctrl plus O and press Enter. Then exit with Ctrl plus X. Now run the command to update Grub. And you can see it found the Windows Boot Manager. Then reboot your system. Now you can use the Grub menu to boot into XOS or Windows 11. As a bonus part of the video, if in case you don't like XOS and decided to uninstall, then reboot your system into Windows 11. Now once you're inside Windows 11, open the search bar and type disk MGMT and open disk management utility. Here in my case, next to the C drive, two new partitions are showing. We need to delete each partition one after the other. Now as you can see, I have deleted the root partition and there is no option to delete the boot EFI partition. We're going to use command prompt to remove this partition. To do so, go ahead, open command prompt and run as administrator. Then type disk part and press enter. Then type list disk. Now this will show all the drives connected to my PC. Now as you can see, drive 0 is the only drive connected to my computer where Windows are present. I'm going to go ahead and select this drive by typing select disk 0. Now I'm going to type list partition to view all partitions of this drive. If you notice carefully, partition 5 is the XOS EFI partition, which we failed to delete from the disk manager, which is this one. Now, as you can see, it's around 1000 megabytes. We're going to go ahead and delete this partition. To do so, type this command to select this partition. Now, make sure you have selected the proper partition. Then type delete partition overwrite and press enter. Now, as you can see under the disk manager, it's now deleted and if we gain back free space. You can use this free space and merge it back to Windows 11. And that's it. We have successfully removed XOS. Now restart your computer. It should boot your system into Windows 11 directly and you won't face any boot issues. And that's pretty much it. This is how you properly set up a do boot on your Windows 11 computer with XOS. Let me know what you think in the comments section down below. If you have any questions or queries, do post them in the comments. Thank you so much for watching. This has been KSK Rayo. I will see you in the next one.